Fact number 24. Joseph Smith sanctioned the Danites' military actions. Sidney Rignan calls for the extermination of the Missouri mobs. Joseph Smith orders the raid of Missouri homes and shops thought connected to the mobs. Apostles testify against Joseph in court. Following the American tradition of giving fiery, emotional speeches of Independence Day, Sidney spoke forcefully to the saints about freedom, the persecution they had endured, and the important role of temples in their spiritual education. At the end of the speech, he warned the enemies of the church to leave the saints alone. Our rights shall no more be trampled on with impunity, he asserted. The man, or the set of men, who attempts it, does it at the expense of their lives. The saints would not be the aggressors, he assured his audience, but they would defend their rights. That mob that comes on us to disturb us, he cried out, it shall be between us and them a war of extermination, for we will follow them till the last drop of their blood is spilled, or else they will have to exterminate us. No more would the saints abandon their homes or crops, no more would they bear the persecution meekly. We this day then proclaim ourselves free, Sidney declared, with a purpose and a determination that never can be broken. No, never. Hosanna, the saints cheered. Hosanna. Back in Missouri, Joseph was optimistic about the future of the church. He had Sidney's 4th of July speech published as a pamphlet. He wanted everyone in Missouri to know that the saints would no longer be intimidated by the mobs and dissenters. Sidney's sermon had emboldened some saints who had banded together a week earlier to defend the church against dissenters. These men went by several names, but they were best known as the Danites, after the tribe of Dan in the Old Testament. Joseph did not organize the group, yet he likely sanctioned some of their actions. In their eagerness to defend the church, the Danites vowed to protect the saints' rights against what they saw as threats from inside and outside the church. Many of them had seen how dissent had unraveled the community in Kirtland, placed Joseph and others at risk of mob attacks, and endangered the ideals of Zion. Together they pledged to protect the community at Far West against any similar threat. Around the time of Signy's public condemnation of the dissenters, the Danites had warned Apostles Oliver Cowdery and David Whitmer and others to leave Caldwell County or face dire consequences. Within days, the men fled the area for good. Hoping to weaken the mobs and bring a rapid end to the conflict, the Saints decided to march on nearby settlements that supported and equipped their enemies. Dividing their men into four units, church and militia leaders ordered raids on Gallatin and two other settlements. The fourth unit would patrol the surrounding area on foot. The next morning, October 18th, was shrouded in fog. David Patton rode out of Adam Onda Elman with a hundred armed men bound for Gallatin. When they arrived in town, the men found it empty except for some stragglers who fled as the men approached. Once the streets were clear, the men broke into the general store and filled their arms with goods and supplies the refugee saints needed in Adam on Diamond. Several men emerged from the store with heavy crates and barrels, which they hefted onto wagons they had brought with them. When the shelves were empty, the men went into other shops and dwellings, taking quilts, bedding, coats, and clothing. The raid lasted several hours. Once they packed away all they could carry, the men torched the store and other buildings and rode out of town. On November 12, 1838, Joseph and more than 60 other saints were taken to the Richmond courthouse to determine if there was enough evidence to try them on charges of treason, murder, arson, robbery, burglary, and larceny. The judge, Austin King, would decide if the prisoners would go to trial. The hearing lasted for more than two weeks. The star witness against Joseph was Samson Avard, who had been a Danite leader. During the siege of Far West, Samson had tried to flee Missouri, but the militia had captured him and threatened to prosecute him if he refused to testify against the prisoners. Samson claimed that everything he had done as a Danite 
had been done under orders from Joseph. He testified that Joseph believed it was the will of God for the saints to fight for their rights against the governments of Missouri and the nation. Samson also said that Joseph believed the church was like the stone spoken of by Daniel in the Old Testament, which would fill the earth and consume its kingdoms. Alarmed, Judge King questioned Joseph about Daniel's prophecy, and Joseph testified that he believed it. The prosecution called more than 40 witnesses to testify against the prisoners, including several former church leaders. Afraid of being prosecuted themselves, John Carroll, William Phelps, and John Whitmer and others had struck a deal with the state of Missouri to testify against Joseph in exchange for their own freedom. Under oath, they described outrages they had witnessed during the conflict, and all of them blamed Joseph. The saints' defense, meanwhile, consisted of a few witnesses who did little to sway the judge's opinion. Other witnesses could have testified in Joseph's behalf, but they were harassed or scared away from the courtroom. By the time the hearing was over, five saints, including Parley Pratt, were jailed in Richmond to await trial on murder charges related to the fight at Crooked River. Those who remained, Joseph and Hiram Smith, Signe Rignan, Lehman White, and Caleb Baldwin, and Alexander McRae, were transferred to a jail in a town called Liberty to await trial on charges of treason. If convicted, they could be executed.